adorable, eccentric, smart-alecky, funny, or brave. They're the little people on TV who capture our hearts and make us tune in each week. You seem like a lovely girl, and I would hate to see you get hurt. Why would I get hurt? Because if your stage kiss with Zach lasts longer than a second and a half, I'm going to flatten you like roadkill. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 live-action TV kids. For this list, we've looked at TV kids who started their respective series under the age of 15, and who made an impact with their roles on sitcoms or dramas. Hey, no way, forget that. We're gonna fix you up so we can get a really sick kid in here. Number 10, Corey Matthews, Boy Meets World. Uh, my name's Corey Matthews. Part of ABC's TGIF lineup, Boy Meets World spans seven years in the life of Cornelius Matthews, better known as Corey. I think we know each other long enough for me to call you Cornelius. <laughs> Shh, Mr. Feeney, come, not even Topanga knows that. At first portrayed as a sporty, wisecracking kid who wasn't too interested in school. Good morning, Mr. Matthews. I trust you've done the homework. Yes, I did, sir. But, but my, my little, little sister, sister ate it. it. Corey later becomes more neurotic and insecure. I don't want to talk about it now. But through it all, he was still the guy to solve all his group's problems. Flanked by his best bud, Sean, his older brother, Eric, and his longtime crush, Topanga, and always getting sage advice from his teacher slash principal slash professor slash neighbor, Mr. Feeney. Mr. Feeney, this stinks. Corey navigates the ups and downs of high school, parties, girls, his first drink, college, and finally marriage with the wit and sincerity that won him many fans along the way. No, don't hug me! <laughs> Number nine, Arnold Jackson, Different Strokes. What you talking about, Willis? Gary Coleman will always be remembered for his portrayal of the adorable and funny Arnold Jackson. Welcome, gentlemen. <laughs> you talking to us? Of course. How about that, Willis? Downtown two minutes and already with Jim. After both their parents pass away, Arnold and his brother Willis move from Harlem to an upscale high-rise in the city to live with their new adopted father, Philip Drummond, or Mr. D, as Arnold affectionately calls him. What you talking about, Mr. D? Best known for his inescapable catchphrase, Arnold was known as a schemer. But he also brought an endearing worldview to the show, one that was filled with both childhood innocence and humor. Aren't you going to shake hands with me? I never shake hands with girls. Why not? Because I want to save something for after I get married. And was more often than not spot on. If mama was alive, you would have got a lot worse than a raspberry. What you talking about? We're here because before mama died, she asked Mr. Drummond to take care of us. Do you think she'd send us to live with somebody who didn't want us? Number eight, Darlene and DJ Connor, Roseanne. Stop it! Stop it! I mean it! I mean it! Smart-mouthed Darlene Connor is probably one of the most sarcastic kids to ever grace American TV. Sorry, Mom, we were having so much fun, I lost track of time. A sporty tomboy, Darlene loves to taunt her older sister, Becky. Why don't you just tell the truth for once? Okay, I will. The truth is, you're a dink. And younger brother, DJ. Darlene hates me. David Jacob, or DJ, is the youngest member of the Connor family for much of the series, and isn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. Darlene called me a prevert. <laughs> no, you're not a prevert, honey. You're a pervert. But what makes the characters of Darlene and DJ so special is the fact that they are both believable. Neither tries too hard to be cute, funny, or sophisticated. They're just real kids. Whoa, someone's gonna drink out of it! You put your finger in it! Don't worry, dorky. This finger's clean. I had it in my nose all day. Add great writing to the mix, and you've got the recipe for a hit show. Great game. They beat us by like 20 points, but at the end we went and tipped their bus over and set it on fire. Number seven, Michelle Tanner, Full House. Hello, my name is Michelle Tanner. Hello, my name is Michelle Tanner. <laughs> Always quick to dispense advice, hand out warnings, and lend an ear to her uncles. Uncle Jesse's apprehensive. That means nervous. Michelle Tanner was the bossy and mischievous youngest sister on the sitcom Full House. Played by the Olsen twins, she, along with her older sisters DJ and Stephanie, were your classic 90s sitcom kids. I'll babysit my new cousins anytime, except for Friday and Saturday nights. And I'll take Friday and Saturday until I start dating. 
I'll have two, but no diapers. They make me apprehensive. Known for catchphrases like, You got it, dude. And, Aw, oh, nuts. Michelle, and in fact most members of the extended Tanner household, were big on the cheesy comeback. But the littlest member of the family scored high on the cuteness scale. Oh, yeah! That chick knocks me out. Yeah. Number six, Manny Delgado, Modern Family. I wrote a song about him in the car. Of course you did. How many middle school kids do you know who enjoy drinking espresso, talking marriage and kids with their decades older stepsister, and writing love poems? I put my thoughts into words, and not my words into action. An old soul trapped in a young man's body, Manuel Alberto Delgado is perceptive and very smart, but also extroverted, confident, and a total romantic. You still have 12 lines to go. Spoiler alert, I love you. None of which makes him especially popular with kids his age. He's also got a keen sense of fashion and is often seen sporting a burgundy dinner jacket. I'm gonna wear my burgundy dinner jacket. Of course you are. One of the most original kids on modern TV, Manny clocks in at number six on our list. Oh, my backpack is in there, Jay. My poem for my poetry Calm reading. Calm down. Didn't you back it up in your computer? What kind of man writes poetry on a computer? You could have ended that sentence after poetry. Number five. Wednesday and Pugsley Adams, The Adams Family. Hello. With their pale skin and dark hair, Wednesday and Pugsley Adams are anything but ordinary. Thank you, thing. With a rather ghoulish entourage, their hobbies, building crazy machines, playing with dangerous toys, raising spiders. You ever know a child who could raise thoroughbred spiders? <laughs> no. And beheading dolls seem quite normal, all things considered. It's Marie Antoinette. Grandmama told us about the French Revolution, and Paxley chopped off her head. <laughs> when they venture out into the world, their interactions with so-called normal people are hilarious. Wednesday, what was that? Love dust. In one episode, Pugsley attempts to join the Boy Scouts, and his family becomes very concerned with his odd behavior and seeks the help of a psychiatrist. In the first place, it's those terrible clothes he's been wearing. While the show only ran for two years, Wednesday and Pugsley remain two of the most original kids ever on TV. Wednesday's in love! Now you stop that, Pugsley. It's not nice to tease your sister, Doug. Besides, she's been taking judo lessons. Number four, Arya Stark, Game of Thrones. Your name is? Arya. Badass Arya Stark is one of the bravest kids on TV. Starring on the insanely popular HBO show Game of Thrones, she's the youngest girl from House Stark and is far more interested in swords and fighting than she is in becoming a proper noblewoman. Do you like the balance? I think so. Amidst the backstabbing, plotting, and murder in the fictional land of Westeros, Arya must find a way to not only survive on her own, but also to avenge the deaths of the many loved ones she's lost in her short life. Go on, get it over with. The list of doomed men. I'm almost done. Only one name left. Go on. The Hound. A courageous and fierce little thing, she is truly a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> Number three, Kevin Arnold, The Wonder Years. Yeah, I, I think it had sort of a reverse spin on it. Has any other television kid perfected the eyebrow raise as well as Kevin Arnold? Um, did you just say you'd go to the dance with Brad? Set in suburban America, The Wonder Years follows main character Kevin from middle school through to high school in the turbulent days of the 1960s. Hi, would you care to dance? Hello there. I couldn't help noticing you all alone over here. You want to dance? Yo, babe, I'm a dance fool. I don't got all night. Full of nostalgia, sentimentality, and awesome music, the show will make you laugh, cry, and want to leaf through old yearbooks to find your first crush, thanks to the events in Nice Guy Kevin's life. It was the first kiss for both of us. But as far as insecure, girl-crazy adolescent boys go, things don't get much better than Kevin Arnold. The key would be to appear like I was having the time of my life and dance as I had never danced before. Number two, Malcolm Wilkerson, Malcolm in the Middle. My name is Malcolm. You wanna know what the best thing about childhood is? At some point it stops. 
This show follows the trials and tribulations of a dysfunctional suburban family, as seen through the eyes of middle child Malcolm. They do this every month. He has sensitive skin. The hair gets itchy under his clothes. A boy genius with an IQ of 165. He has an IQ of 165. Who? Malcolm. He's a genius. Malcolm has a hard time fitting in and dealing with his bizarre and dim-witted family, whom he blames for pretty much everything wrong in his life. I want a better family! His large ego and intelligence often get him into hot water, and he acts out accordingly, much to the amusement of viewers. I can't be the only one here who thinks there's something deeply flawed with your game plan. I think if you thought about it for just a second, you'd realize you need to make some changes. It's not easy being the middle child, and Malcolm is often his own worst enemy. And Mom always says, it's not a wasted experience if you learn something from it. And I definitely think I did. Okay, ready! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. What do you think you're doing? Nothing. Get over here. Say your song, Martin. <laughs> That was pretty good. You had no idea what you were saying. So, my hair was fantastic. <laughs> Have I? Mm-hmm. Hi, Mom. Hi, Grandpa. Hello. Oops, sir. <laughs> Number one, Dennis Mitchell, Dennis the Menace. Hi, Mr. Wilson. Oh, it's you, Dennis. <laughs> Jeepers, Mr. Wilson. Jeepers, isn't this fun, Mr. Wilson? It should come as no surprise that the original menace to society sits at number one on our list. Where's good old Mr. Wilson? A well-meaning and kind-hearted boy, Dennis Mitchell first came to life in comic strip form. And like his cartoon counterpart, he seems to always cause accidental havoc wherever he goes, usually at the expense of his poor neighbor, Mr. Wilson. Oh, for Pete's sake. With his trusty slingshot always in the back pocket of his trademark overalls, Dennis was portrayed as the quintessential American boy, and his many adventures have become TV classics. Dennis, would you please mind not staring at me? Then how will I know when you start walking in your sleep? I am not going to walk in my sleep. Oh, good grief. Oh, oh. Do you agree with our list? Which TV kids would you want to hang out with? For more childish top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Ah!